If you've ever felt overwhelmed by jazz improvisation and unsure of where to get started, today I'm going to show you exactly how it works, make it simple so that you get headed in the right direction, coming up. Okay, so if you're a beginner or someone who's been looking on the sidelines on getting into jazz, it can seem a little bit overwhelming, frustrating, overly complicated. So what I wanna do for you today is break things down into simple terms and give you essential building blocks that will help you start improvising today. So in order to do that, let's look at this chord progression, which is D minor seven, G seven, C major seven. And it sounds like this. Okay, now this is what we call a two, five, one in the key of C major. Okay, a two, five, one in the key of C major. And even if you don't entirely understand what that means for right now, what you do need to know is that this is the most common chord progression that will come up in jazz standards. Jazz standards being the vehicles in which jazz musicians use to improvise. So two, five, one is a really important chord progression you need to master. So we're gonna look at how to start improvising over top of the two, five, one, because this is gonna get you so far when it comes to jazz improvisation in general. So the natural first question is, what notes do I play over top of this two, Two, five, one. To make things really simple, what you do need to understand is that D minor and G7 all share the same notes that are within C major seven. So C major seven is what we call the parent key center. And the parent key center has a scale. And in this case, it's the C major scale, which sounds like this. A lot of us know our major scales pretty well, so I'm feeling confident that this is a very simple way for you to understand just how we can get started at the most basic level of what notes we can choose over this chord progression. So essentially, because D minor and G7 all share notes within the C major scale, they're from the same key, that means we can play the C major scale over top of the 2-5-1 chord progression. So it would sound like this. Listening to that, obviously nothing sounds wrong, right? So D minor seven, right? The G seven. And then of course the C major seven. Those are all what we would call right notes, right? There's nothing that's actually wrong. However, listening to that, there's really nothing that makes the chord changes come out. And something that you need to understand about jazz improvisation is that what makes great jazz musicians sound so great is they're able to start making those chords come out. So in order to differentiate a little bit, let's go on to the next step of our note choices here. And in comes what we call the modes of the major scale. And in this case, the mode for the D minor seven is Dorian, for G seven is Mixolydian, and then for C major seven is Ionian. Now, if those names sound foreign to you, don't worry about that because it's very simple. Remember that D minor and G seven all share the same notes as the C major scale. So all we're going to do now is essentially say, let's play the C major scale, but starting on the D note over top of the D minor seven. So it would sound like this. Okay, so it's the C major scale starting and ending on D natural. And we just call that Dorian. It's just a fancy name for the second mode of the major scale. In other words, starting and ending the major scale on the second tone, all right? And then when we get to Mixolydian, all that means is we're gonna start and end on the fifth tone of the C major scale, which is G. So it'll sound like this. And then Ionian is really just a fancy name for a major scale, the one major scale, so the C major scale. So when we start and end each on their perspective root of each chord, we're gonna get a sound like this. So 
So already immediately we have some improvement here, right? We can actually hear the chords a little bit better. Coming out and differentiating each other, even though we're still just playing the C major scale. And another thing to notice is that we're actually playing eighth notes here, and that's because eighth notes is a really common subdivision that you'll find in jazz. So we wanna get really good at playing swung eighth notes if we're playing a swing tune, of course, because that is very common for us to see, okay? Now, what hopefully is obvious to you though is that this still isn't the best solution for actually sounding like we're hearing the D minor seven, the G seven, and the C major seven. It still kind of just all sounds like the same stuff. So what we have to start doing when we're given all these note choices like the scale, we need to start breaking it down a little bit further, asking ourselves the question, what are the most important notes? And the most important notes are the chord tones. Now for jazz, we use seventh chords. So in our case, D minor seven, and then G seven, that's a dominant seven, and then C major seven, that's a major seventh, right? And the formula for all of these, for the minor seventh is root, flat three, five, flat seven. And for the dominant seven, it's root, third, fifth, flat seven. And for the major seven, it's root, third, fifth, major seventh. Now, again, all we're really doing to get these chord tones is simply looking back at our Dorian scale and asking ourselves, what is every other note in this scale? And that is where you find your chord tones, right? So every other note in the scale is the chord tones, the root, the third, the fifths, and the seventh. So when we're playing just the chord tones over top of this chord progression, it sounds like this. emphasize one more time, chord tones are really important. In fact, I always go to chord tones first before I talk about scales in general as far as where should you start with improvising. It's not that we don't want to know what the scales are because as you can see, that helped us get the chord tones and also it does give us more information that's going to be important, like what other notes can we play outside of the chord tones. But the chord tones are structurally important to the chord, so we want to really know those forwards and backwards especially in the case of this 251. Now, here's the problem though. We know from what we've heard so far that this doesn't really sound like jazz. And that's because jazz musicians have a couple of secrets. And the first secret is that they actually aren't just using the C major scale, not even close. In fact, the scale that they're actually using is the chromatic scale. Now, this might sound controversial at first, especially if you are already a seasoned jazz musician, but bear with me really quick. Essentially, a chromatic scale, all it really is, is every single note in Western music that you can play. In this case, we're just gonna start on the C. So it's C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and then we're back at C again. Right? And if we're gonna play the chromatic scale over top of a two, five, one, it sounds like this. So if you're really paying attention here, basically you're understanding that I just said, you can play any note that you want over top of any chord. Now that might sound mind boggling and it really can be. In fact, this is what kind of non-educated musicians who come and listen to jazz, sometimes they think that it's just random notes or that it's all playing chromatics, kind of like we just played here. However, like I said, jazz musicians have a second secret. And that second secret is they do not play the chromatic scale like a scale, and they also don't play the major scale like a scale. Instead, we go back to chord tones again, and we remember the root, the third, and the seventh of each chord. And instead we start asking a different question altogether. And that question is, how can I use notes that resolve melodically to those chord tones? 
Okay, how do I find the right notes that can resolve melodically to those chord tones? Because again, the chord tones are structural. They'll make the chord changes pop out in our solos. But the major scale and every single note in between and the modes, those are the different note choices that we actually have. However, when we stop thinking about scales as we play scales over chords, instead we think of what notes can we use to resolve to chord tones, it changes the narrative altogether. So to better understand this, let's use an example of how a jazz musician might resolve to a chord tone. And what we'll do first is we'll look at resolving to the third of every single chord, okay? Now the third for D minor is F, the third for G7 is B natural, and the third for C major seven is E natural. So I wanna to resolve to those. And a simple way we can do that is simply by just starting a note above and resolving by a half step to that third. Okay, remember, we can play any note that we want technically, the key is we're trying to resolve it. So if we're playing this D minor seven and we want to resolve to the third, let's just say we start with an E natural, which comes from the C major scale or the D Dorian mode and arrive to that F note, which is the third. Okay, so that's one way we could do it. Now taking a look at the G7, let's move a half step into that third, the B natural. But this time what we're gonna do is use a note from the chromatic scale, which is a sharp. So we're going to go A sharp to B, which is the third. Okay. And then looking ahead of the C major, we're arriving at the E natural, which is the third, but we're going to get there also through the chromatic scale with a D sharp. So if we're going to play this line, this is what it sounds like over the two, five, one. super simple, but this is a legitimate starting place for us to start understanding what jazz musicians are doing. Again, how are we resolving to those chord tones? We're using the chromatic scale and the major scale. So let's look at another way and let's add another note into the mix. Now in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to still approach the thirds of each chord, but what we're going to do instead is start from a half step below in pitch and a half step above. So if we're encircling the third of the D minor seven, the F, let's go E natural, F sharp, which is above in pitch, to F natural. Now, E, again, is from the C major scale. F sharp is not in the C major scale, it is from the chromatic scale. So we have this kind of a movement. And then let's do the same thing on the G7 with a B flat, a C, going into our B natural. And then on the C major, we have an E flat, an F natural to an E natural, okay? Now, another thing that we like to call this is called enclosure. We call it an enclosure because again, we're approaching from above and below our target note, which is again, a chord tone. So here's what it sounds like. There's many other ways to approach a target tone, a chord tone, and of course you don't have to just use the third, and indeed sometimes you can actually target scale tones, like the ninth as we would call it, and you can use more notes to approach it as well. And that's where jazz musicians really become an expert, is they've figured out a bunch of different ways to resolve to these chord tones. So take a listen to this actual jazz lick, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, and here it is slowly. First, let's identify where the chord tones are. So in this particular line, starting on the D minor seven, we have an F natural, okay? The F natural is the third. Then we have an A, the A is the fifth. We have a D natural, which is of course the root. And then we also have a C natural, which is the seven. And then on the G seven, we have a B natural, which is the third. We have a D, which is the fifth. We have another B natural. We have G, which is the root. G is the root here. And then we also have F, that is the flat seven. And then over the C major seven, we have an E natural, which is the third, 
and we have a G natural, which is the fifth. So every other note in this line is going to be a non chord tone that we're using to resolve to the chord tone. So over top of the D minor seven, we start with a G natural, okay? So that G natural, again, is a note from the C major scale. The G flat that we use is part of the chromatic scale, which resolves to the F natural, which is the third, so it's... Then we go up to the fifth, then we go to an E natural, which is part of the C major scale, so... And then we have our D note, which is the root, to a C, which is the flat seven, then B flat, which is in the chromatic scale, resolving to B natural, now we're on our G7, B natural is the third. Then we do all chord tones, so we go B natural, G, B, to G, which is basically a G triad, right? So we're just flat out playing chord tones. Now we're gonna do notes from the chromatic scale, B flat and A flat, and then chord tones, G to F, that's the root to the seven, and then we end on the C major seven with a third, that's the E to the G. So in totality, sounds like this. So the next natural question is, how do I start creating my own lines like this? Well, you have the notes that you can use and you understand that you can use them to resolve to chord tones. So you can start experimenting and composing your own melodic lines and see what you come up with. But also it's really important that you learn the jazz language by learning licks and even solos by great jazz musicians that you love. Only if you've heard something can you start to replicate it and understand it? So I have a video on the screen right now that will help you learn a jazz solo by ear. I give you very simple steps on how to do that, even if you've never done that before. So go ahead and click that video on the screen right now. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.